When you look across the galaxy map in Elite Dangerous, you might have seen all these systems names that looks really weird and really just look random, but what if I told you that they're not, and you can actually use the system names to detect what kind of stars is gonna be in the system even before you jump in. Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. With Game Glass, you can take control of your ship using a tablet or a phone. You can try it out using some of the free pre-made shots, or you can also make your own custom shots and share them with the community through the built-in marketplace. So gone are the days where you have no more room for all your key bindings. On top of that, Game Glass also supports Star Citizen, so follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free, and use offer code DTEA to get 5% off any purchase. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Elite Dangerous tutorial with Antwerp Astronomy. Today we're going to dive into some nitty gritty details for explorers and we're going to talk about system names in Elite and how they are generated and what kind of information we can pull out of them. As an example, I've just taken a completely random system here. We have taken uh, call 107 sector AA-D space C14-21. That's the system. I'm just going to use that as an example, just a completely random one. Now you can see I've color coded these um, for the different um, sections of the name. First, we have the sector name. Sector name is just a name for the sector. There's no like additional information in that. Uh, they can either be given for law reason, or there can be these different. Uh, it can be combined with different letters from a list, and there are some a certain like. There are certain combinations that are possible here. The sector name is like a zip code, basically. It just tells you the general area um, that uh, that you're in, but there's no necessarily any information about where that is. You can go look up where a sector is, but nothing special there. Then we have the voxel location. And first of all, what is a voxel and how do we decode this location? We're going to talk a lot more about that. We have a mass code, We're going to come back to that in a second. And then we have a system number. System number is just a number. It's just a increasing number that just ensures that each system name is unique. So there's no information in the system number there, the last one, that's just an increasing number for the stars that are being generated in a specific voxel. So you have what's called a voxel, we're not gonna come back to that in a second, just there is a thing, it's called a voxel, and inside that voxel, the numbers count up starting from zero, and then, then they just count up like that. Let's talk about the mass code. A sector in Elite is defined as a 1280 by 1280 by 1280 light year box. So we have a box that is 1280 light years per size. That is a voxel. Inside that voxel, you will have smaller voxels that will then be subdivided into eight. So each side is halved, so you end up with eight new voxels inside that. Those will obviously be uh, be half the size, so that will be, what, 640 light years across for each box, and there will be um, eight voxels in, inside that. Each of those are then further subdivided, again and again and again, they keep getting subdivided, until you have boxes, or voxels, that are 10 by 10 by 10 light years. So you end up with these small 10 by 10 by 10 light year cubes, um, and there will obviously, for one of the, the biggest voxel, the, 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 the sector voxel, there will be 128 of the smallest voxels across. The mass code determines what size voxel um, we are talking about. And notice how these voxels overlap each other. So they take up the same physical space, they overlap each other. But each star belongs in a voxel, but because the voxels overlap the same physical space, you can have one mass code star sitting right next to a mass code star from a different voxel, again, because they are overlapping. So the mass codes start at A, which is the smallest voxels, the 10 light year cube ones. Those are called A, and they go up in size to bigger and bigger and bigger voxels, up to the 1280 light year voxel, um, and that's called an H-class voxel. So the way stars are, star systems have been populated in Elite is you start with, you start with the biggest voxel, the H-class voxel, and in that you populate with systems, the heaviest systems. And when I'm talking about systems, I'm not necessarily talking about just the star. We're talking about the total mass of the system. That means a H-mass code system could have 
um, a very big um, black hole, or it could have uh, multiple black holes, or it could have multiple neutron stars, or it could have a ton of gas giants that somehow adds up to a lot of mass. The point is just, if you go to H mass code systems, then you know that there's going to be a lot of heavy stuff in that. So you're likely to find black holes, you're likely to find neutron stars, white dwarfs, or you're likely to find very big systems with a bunch of planets in them, those kind of stuff. And again, if you go into a, a mass code system, it's going to be very light system. It's going to be small, light stars, maybe without planets or with very few planets. Again, stars are going to be the majority of the mass anyway, but it's going to be smaller stars that you find in those um, in those H, or sorry, M, A class, A mass code systems. And now you can begin to guess that the voxel location then determines where a given voxel is located in the region. Now, if we start with the with the eight class voxels, the big one, there's obviously only one eight class voxel per sector. So that will always have the voxel um, location code AA-A -A, and the number after the mass code will not be there. When, when that number is, is zero, it's not displayed. It's a little confusing, but it's just never displayed there. So the way it works is it's basically just a um, a base 24 number where it just uses the letters from A to Z. So it starts with AA-A, -A, then goes up to BA-A, -A, CA-A, -A, DA-A, -A, keeps going upwards until it reaches ZA-A, -A, and then it becomes AB-A, -A, BB-A, -A, CB-A, -A, keeps going up and up and up. And it does that along first the x-axis until all the voxels in that um, in that row has been named then it goes up for the next row that it fills up it starts at 128 that row so that means if you are in a um, in a in a let's see a, a g size box where you have a uh, the, the example we have here where you have a, a 2x2x2 two by two by two, uh, um, grid of boxes, then the first one will be called AA-A, -A, then it will be called AB-A, -A. the next row will then not be called AC-A, -A, because then it goes up to whatever 128 is, and it starts from the letter combination there, and then it does the same when it jumps up, it, it, it jumps up as if there were 120. That's a little confusing, but just know that the voxel location there just determines where the um, that voxel that you are in is located in in the overall um, overall uh, sector. Okay, so let's try to uh, use an example. Um, I'm just gonna jump into like a, a random spot in the galaxy. I don't know. Let's say here. That's probably fine. Let's zoom in a bit here, and. Um, Let's just make sure we have all our stars enabled here so we can see everything. And we can see here, we have, let's just take that system there as, as an example. So in this system here, we have the uh, Ford Goar, <laughs> that's the sector. We can see we have the three letters here. And we can see this one in particular is a D voxel. So that's probably like um, um, a medium sized uh, system. We can see here the star class of this is F, so that kind of makes sense. Now, if I were interested in looking for black holes, neutron stars in this particular area, what I would do is I would go up here and I would type in first my sector name, like so. Next, what I would do is I would say I want to find the heaviest there is. So I would go for my um, H voxel. So I know there's only one voxel in the uh, the largest one, remember the two, uh, the 1280 on each side box. So I know that the system is going to call AA-A, -A, followed by an H. Then I know that they're not going to have a number because as we talked about, that last part of the um, of the voxel location code is only used if you run out. Um, I, when 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 the AA-A -A section is counted all the way up to set, set, dash, set, then you will just count up with that large part. And that's never used here for the H class system. So in that case, we just go straight to the system number. So now you can see here that I have a total of 35 systems, which has been located in this voxel. And I now know that these 35 systems is gonna be very, very heavy. 
um, and contain something potentially interesting. So if you want to look, all of these are good candidates for looking for black holes, neutron stars, those kind of things. So armed with this knowledge, you now have a much easier time locating interesting systems out there in the black if you are out exploring. This is definitely a tactic that I'm going to be implementing. I am going to have a video coming out pretty soon where I'm going to be talking about what systems I stop and scan in, why I stop in the systems I do, what do I do to um, to balance out both getting some profit out of my exploration as well as also getting some decent speed on my travels. Kind of try to balance those things out. I have a video that's going to come out uh, in the not too distant future about that. So if you're interested in more Elite Dangerous exploration videos, then do stay tuned to the channel by hitting the subscribe button below the video. But that's great for today. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you found this video interesting. If you did, give a like and also next time. I will see you guys in space.